Hi guys and welcome to TechFurb. Today we are going back to some CPU reviews and we are reviewing this little guy here which is the i7-3770. So let's get into it. So, i7-3770, the reason why we're reviewing this is twofold. Uh, first reason is I managed to get my hands on it. Uh, and the second reason is this is a pretty common chip in a lot of older, say, Dells or OEM PCs. Or there's, a, there's quite a few of these CPUs popping up on the market, uh, along with the i7-2600. Um, so that, you know, the second and third gen i-series I CPUs are starting to really pop up on the market. And we've reviewed an i5-2400 and 2500 in the past on this channel. Amazing chips, fantastic performance but this is a whole nother level uh, the second gen uh, i fives were just barely keeping up with the RX 480 they did enough to, to justify running with that graphics card but if you went any higher you went with a, a, a 1070 or you know anything higher than a 480 yeah it wasn't great but this guy different story it's i7 it is third gen uh it's the non-overclockable version i wasn't lucky enough to get my hands on a k version but that's fine uh this is probably better anyway because this is something that you can easily pick up pair with almost any motherboard uh anything from a h61 right up to a z77 will work with this chip which means you can get a cheap motherboard um and yeah it's that's the reality of what's going on there um now for testing, we paired it with 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. Uh, we also used two separate graphics cards, so an RX 480 and a GTX 1080. Uh, the reason for those two cards is the 480, we expect the i7 to be able to, you know, max out the, the 480 and, and not, not to be a bottleneck. But we do expect the 1080 to be a bottleneck. But how much of a bottleneck is the question is in this situation, you know? You're gonna see a benefit of going higher than a, than a 480. And unfortunately, I don't have my hand, I don't have access to a 1070 or a bag of 56 or, or anything in that uh, tier above a 480, 580, 1060, you know? So, um, a bit unfortunate. So there's a bit of a girth there, but uh, we will make it work. Uh, now, for a reference point of benchmarking that CPU, we are using my Ryzen 7 1700. Now, for those of you who haven't seen much of my channel before, I do not own a faster CPU than the Ryzen 7 1700. That is my daily driver. Uh, and as much as I would love to have an i9 9900K just lying around for benchmarking, I'm not rich, I can't afford to do that. So unfortunately we have to use my Ryzen 7 1700. But the good point, the good thing here is if the i7-3770 can match the Ryzen 7 1700, it means that, hey, you know, you, you're not far off being able to max out that 1080 because um, you realistically, unless you go for the real top end uh, i7, i9 chips, you're not gonna max out a 1080. Uh, so, that's the specs. Uh, let's jump into some benchmarks. First up, uh, it's one of 10 games that I've benchmarked. It's CSGO, an old favorite, uh, and it's a very interesting graph. Um, it seems like we're heavily CPU bottlenecked on both the 1700 and the i7-3770. Um, RX 480 was maxed out, but once we dropped in that 1080, it didn't make much of a difference. So we're very much CPU bound there and they're pretty much neck and neck. So that's that's awesome. Again, uh, 1080p Ultra as well as the settings we're using in most of these benchmarks. The only exception is GTA 5, but we'll get to that a bit later. Uh, next up was... Doom! Doom is a benchmark that I like very much because it's very easy to keep it on rails. It's single player, very easy to benchmark, gives you very consistent results. And uh, this is great because we're starting to see some CPU scaling here. Um, Ryzen does actually perform well, I found in Doom. Uh, I don't know about, I can't speak for other reviewers, but in my testing I found that the Ryzen 7 chip is very good in this game. Uh, and with the 1080, we're seeing 111 frames per second for the Ryzen 7 1700. Uh, when we're pairing it with the 480, we're seeing 79 frames per second. So they're the two reference points. And then when we drop down to the 3770, we start to see a CPU bottleneck. Uh, now, the 3770 can't quite max out the RX 480. It averages 69 frames per second, which is a good number. And 
when we pair it with a tranny, it's going to have higher frame, you know, maximum frames and that sort of stuff, which means it gets the 90, but we are seeing a CPU bottleneck in Doom. So, um, a little bit disappointing there, but at the end of the day, it's still getting over 60 frames per second, regardless of what graphics card we're using. And based on this graph, I would say that pairing it with an RX 480 is not a bad option at this stage. But this is two benchmarks so far. We have many more to come. Uh, next is F1 2017. I like F1 2017 because again, it gives you good CPU scaling. It's a very good benchmark for benchmarking CPUs. Uh, and with the 1080, we saw 109 frames, uh, sorry, with the 1080 with the Ryzen 7, uh, we had 109 frames per second on average and uh, then dropping down to 78 frames per second when we go to the 480. But um, with the 3770, we see that the 480 is actually maxed out. Uh, it's pretty much matching almost exactly, um, or bar the 0.1% lows of the Ryzen 7, so that's good. But uh, once we give it the extra horsepower of that 1080, uh, it starts the bottleneck and you, we can see the Ryzen 7 1700 pulling away. So, interesting data. Uh, next, we have GTA 5, and this is a game that has traditionally favored Intel. Ryzen doesn't generally do very well at this, um, but we can see here that uh, with that 480 again, it's matching it. And interestingly, with the 1080, it's starting to catch up to the Ryzen 7. So there's a, a, still a little bit of a gap, um, but we're seeing that it's not. It's, we're seeing that it's bottlenecking the 480, which is exactly what we expect to happen, and, and that's fantastic. So um, that's GTA 5. Next, we have PUBG. Now, this is where I have to say a disclaimer. <sighs> PUBG, along with Fortnite and Apex Legends, these three games are an absolute nightmare for reviewers. Um, the reason is they're not consistent. They, you get dropped into a random map every time, varies the amount of players you have. There's so many variables in here that make it very hard to get it consistent. And that's why with these benchmark results, they're a bit inconsistent. So we'll see that the 1700 with the 480 is actually completely outclassed by the 3770. But I would say that is due to being a different map. Um, and you know, I run this benchmark multiple times and you know that's this is just unfortunately what happens with this multiplayer benchmark but the important thing here we're seeing is that with the 3770 um it's matching the ryzen 7 1700 or beating it which is fantastic so um again it's not bottlenecked by that 480 and it looks like there's headroom for let's say going to a 1070 or something like that so that's good news. Um, we'll focus on the positives. Uh, now, Fortnite, again, to reiterate what I said, um, we're seeing the 3770 actually consistently outperforming the um, the Ryzen 7, which is great. Uh, so I would say that's actually a consistency thing. It's not just um, benchmark variance, but there is a little bit of that in there. So, you know, at the end of the day, we're, the data we want to take away from this is that the 3770 is a good chip and it's performing well. It's 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 being bottlenecked by the 480, which is exactly what we want. Uh, next, we have Apex Legends. And again, this is a game that I found really hard to benchmark. Um, 3770 ran well, as did the Ryzen 7 1700. 3770 did completely outstrip the um, Ryzen 7 in performance, which is great, fantastic. Um, and overall, yeah, we're, we're seeing that the 3770s quite comfortable at running these games. Uh, so that's that's awesome. Uh, right, so back into single player, back into predictable benchmarking. I can keep it on rails per se, which means that we're getting consistency in the benchmark runs. So back to reliable data, and we're seeing here that we are ab actually GPU bottlenecked. Um, the Ryzen 7 1700 and 3770, they're getting the exact same benchmark results. V-Sync was off, I did check that multiple times um, and it's it's just averaging 61 frames per second with that 1080 uh, on both CPUs. 1% and 0.1% lows, a slight variance. Um, and then with the 480, uh, we're seeing that a bottleneck the CPUs. So um, again, I'm testing on ultra settings, so I wouldn't recommend you run your games on ultra settings. It's just, it, it's, it's good for benchmarking for me because it, it really just, stresses everything um but yeah at the end of the day if you want high frames per second just drop your settings and you'll be sweet but uh regardless of that we can see that the 3770 it's still being bottlenecked by the 480 so that's that's good news uh next up we have far cry 5 we're moving into some ubisoft titles and here we see that uh we're maxing out the 480 but as soon as we go to the 1080 um yeah the the um the 3770 starts to fall away from the ryzen 7 and um 
Far Cry 5 is representative of, of a modern game engine, uh, so it's going to take advantage of more cores and more threads, which is which is good going forward if you're buying newer CPUs. Um, but take away from this that it is again bottlenecked by the 480 and it's performing well so uh, last benchmark here is Ghost Recon Wildlands and this is generally a GPU um, bound game and as we can see here we're pretty much getting identical results across the board um, but hey that's that's fantastic so that's what that's what we wanted uh, now let's move to synthetics uh, next we had 3d mark firestrike and we can see pretty much similar scores across the board. Um, CPU does affect the scores um, in, in terms of physics and things like that. Um, so it's good to see that the 3770 is matching the um, the 1700. So that's that's fantastic. Um, then we have 3D Mark Time Spy, uh, and this is probably favouring the Ryzen 7 CPU a little bit more. Uh, it is a DirectX 12 benchmark, so possibly that it's using a bit more of those cores and threads that are available because. It's kind of a four core, eight thread versus eight core, 16 thread. So it's a bit unfair in the um, Ryzen 7's favor. But as we can see, um, 3770 performing fantastically. It's not GPU bottlenecked. Uh, now, Cinebench, uh, this is purely for representative purposes. The reason why I've included the 1700, because again, it is absolutely trouncing 3770, but it's got double the core count and double the thread count. So. It's to be expected. Um, in terms of direct scaling, if you double the score of the i7 3770, it's, it's pretty much the Ryzen 7 1700. So um, in terms of IPC, and well, not so much IPC because the clocks are slightly different. The, um, the Ryzen 7 is only running at three gigahertz straight. The Ryzen 7, the i7 3770 runs at 3.4 stock. Um, so there's a bit of variance in that regard. Um, but overall, 669 that is a, a very good cpu score um you'd be getting that you'd actually be clearing a ryzen 3 and an i3 um you'd, you'd probably be having to move to a modern i5 to actually start beating that score so that's fantastic news um for the i7 3770 so that's the end of the benchmarks now data is one thing but it can't be substituted for experience so i'm going to give you the experience here's the reality Using the i7-3770 system, I benchmark that, I run the, you know, swap the graphics cards out, whatever, I'm using that system. If I was using that system blind, in the sense that I don't know what the computer is, you've just given me a screen, a keyboard and a mouse and told me to do these benchmarks, I couldn't actually tell you the difference between the systems. The performance is effectively the same in terms of gaming um, in terms of when you have a lot of things open yeah you're going to start seeing that the Ryzen 7 is going to really make the most of its higher core count um, but in terms of gaming performance which is all we care about at this point that Ryzen uh, the i7 3770 it's more than capable um, it's being bottlenecked by the RX 480 almost all the time sometimes it isn't but that's just certain benchmarks uh, and yeah I'm, I'm pretty impressed by this CPU. Um, so would I recommend buying this CPU? Absolutely, 100%. It's, it's a fantastic CPU for gaming. Uh, if you're doing light content creation like Adobe Premiere and things like that, it's still perfectly fine. I actually do use this CPU um, for remote editing when I'm, when I'm doing my rally stuff, so it's, it's fine for that. Um, and generally, it's, it's, it's an all-round good buy. So I guess the question comes down to how much would I pay for it? Now, Bearing in mind that I live in Australia, um, the used market here is not great. So if you're in, say, America or somewhere else, the prices are not going to be relevant to you. The price is going to be completely separate depending on your region. But uh, with the context of that in mind, I would be more than happy to pay about 120, 130 for the CPU. I consider that quite reasonable given the performance you're getting. Um, because if you were to buy a new CPU, uh, you spend that amount of money, 120, 130, you're getting a, a, a bottom of the range. I maybe not even an i3 you're getting a, you're definitely getting a ryzen 3 but you're going to struggle to get an i3 for that price and uh to be honest that performance is going to just trounce anything in that price bracket brand new so that's fantastic um so yeah that's all i've got it's a positive review i'm very happy with the cpu i highly recommend it uh and ultimately the other question is if you're stuck on this cpu is it time to upgrade well that is a great question this is this is where it's going to vary so if you're using that CPU and let's say your objective is to get either 60 frames per second at 4K, 1440 or 1080p, 
If you're aiming for about 60 frames per second, you're fine. Don't bother upgrading that CPU. Um, certainly upgrade your GPU for 4K60 because you're gonna need the latest cards for that. Um, but yeah, if you're, if you're happy with 60 frames per second gaming, just keep this CPU, it's more than fine. Um, but if you want to go for the high refresh rate, 144 hertz gaming, uh, yeah, I don't, I, you're gonna have to drop the quality settings and I don't really know. This CPU is kind of on the edge for the high refresh rate gaming um but for 90 percent of gamers that don't want that ridiculous high refresh rate and the, the over top performance it's more than capable in terms of what gpu would i pair with it um anything over a 1070 is going to be overkill so for the currently new release graphics cards i reckon you'd probably be safe pairing it with the 1660 ti mm, rtx 2060 you're going to get a bottleneck but uh 1660 ti down um it's more than capable. Uh, it's yeah, it's it's a fantastic buy. Uh, so overall, I recommend this CPU if you've got it. I reckon you're fine for another couple of years. You can keep it. Um, and if you haven't got it, you're on a crappy system. You're trying to you know build a budget PC, and this CPU is available. Snap it up, drop in a graphics card, and you will be a very happy person. So thanks for watching, guys. Leave a like if you liked it. Leave a dislike. If you disliked it, comments down below if you've got any questions for me uh, or if you have any thoughts on the CPU or on the review. Uh, and ultimately as well, the giveaway as well. I haven't said much about this yet. Uh, I will be doing a dedicated video for that to pick the winner. Uh, that will be done next week, uh, probably just before the weekend. Um, and I haven't 100% worked it out, but there wasn't a lot of entrance. So if you guess correctly, uh, there's a very, very, very high chance that you could win it. There's about 10 or 15 people that um, managed to at least guess one of the things right and there was maybe one or two people that guessed it right I'm not going to reveal what the system was that can wait until the announcement of the winner video so thanks for watching guys um, thank you for all the support and I will catch you in the next video